Welcome to Easy Alim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to start on a fourth topic. So our topic for today is acid, base and salts. So we are doing just the introduction bits of acids and then we do a little bit of bases and then we dive deep now into the form work. So you notice some of the concepts you'll be learning today are just a little bit, a little bit repetition of what we did in Form 1 and uh, Form 2. So on, in terms, in regards to, to salts and in regards to uh, bases, so make sure you're able to like connect those two like um, topics that we did previously. So acids are substances whose molecules yield hydrogen ions in water or they, they are substances that contain uh, replaceable hydrogen which can be wholly and partially replaced. So if you look at like what an acid is, we mentioned what an acid was when we were discussing salts in form 2. So if you're able to have uh, if a compound has a replaceable hydrogen, it's it's an, an acid. It can either be replaced partially or fully. So these substances, when you, you you put them in water, they dissociate. This is the Arrhenius definition of an acid. So for example, hydrochloric acid is an example of an acid. If you, you dissolve it in water, it dissociates to form hydrogen ions and chloride ions. So when you look at bronsted lowry definition, acids are proton donors. So they give off the hydrogen ions. So it provides protons or hydrogen ions in solution. So for example, if you were to look at this reaction, you notice hydrochloric acid is losing its hydrogen to form chloride ions. And then the water is gaining an hydrogen. So the hydrochloric acid has given off an hydrogen ions or a proton. So hydrochloric acid is the one that has donated. So from the backward reaction from right to left, hydrogen uh, hydrogenium ions donate a proton to form water. Thus, um, the hydrogenium ions is an opposite proton donor. So if you are looking at the other way around, like if you look at it in this direction, the hydrozonium ions is a proton donor. But if you are looking at a forward reaction, hydrochloric acid is the acid. So it depends on what situation you are looking at it from. So next, you are going to look at the strength of acids. Acids can either be categorized as weak or strong acids. So strong acids are those that dissociate fully or they dissociate to a large extent in water to yield many hydrogen ions. And they, they yield to the solution as many protons as they possibly can. So examples of strong acids are hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, and nitric acid. These ones dissociate fully, or they give a many or large concentrations of hydrogen ions when they dissolve or they dissociate. And then weak acids, uh, when they dissociate in solution, they dissociate partially or they yield fewer hydrogen ions in solution. So they do not ionize completely to, or to a large extent. Some of their molecules remain unionized in solution. Examples are carbonic acid. So you can see carbonic acid only dissociates to give one hydrogen ion and ethanoic acid dissociates to give only also one, one hydrogen ion. So there's a difference between strength and concentration. It is important that you note this is an assessed question. So concentrated ions are the ones that have um, a higher number of acid molecules per given volume. So in this case, we're just looking at the volume of the solution. And, and the most common solvent we use is water. So when we look at the amount of the acid in water molecules, let's say we have a very large amount of acid in a small amount of water. It means that the particles of the acid in that water are very high. And we can also have uh, weak acids uh, that are not concentrated. 
or dilute acids. The one is the dilute acid, not weak. Dilute acids now is the other way around. They have more water molecules than the acids. That does not disqualify like these acids as weak, uh, strong or weak. It can be a strong acid but concentrated and dilute, and it can be a weak acid that is concentrated and dilute. Note that. So weakness and strengthness of an acid is how they dissociate. But concentration and dilution is how much of them, of those particles, are in water or in a volume. So we can have a concentrated acid, we can have a concentrated acid, but it's weak in nature. Like we can have it an oil cast that is very concentrated, but still it doesn't dissociate fully. We can also have a very strong acid that is dilute, but it still dissociates fully, but it's very dilute. So get the, the difference in the two. Thus, thus there are some concentrated the uh they are concentrated strong acid or dilute strong acid as well as concentrated weak acids and dilute weak acids so get that major difference so when we are comparing the strengths of acid one of the ways we can is by the evolution of hydrogen gas so we will take two two acids which have different strengths so hydrochloric acid and ethanoic acid. You know hydrochloric acid is strong, ethanoic acid is weak. But how can we tell they are strong and weak? So we, we react them with magnesium rebound, uh, and then we collect the amount of oxygen that is given off. So one of we put uh, ethanoic acid and hydrochloric acid in two separate tubes, and then we add magnesium rebounds in those two separate tubes. So hydrochloric acid evolves hydrogen uh, much more quickly. So you're, you're going to see a lot of effervescence in the tube containing hydrochloric acid. And then you'll see less effervescence in the tube containing ethanoic acid. They're of equal concentration. Note, they're of equal concentration. And you know they're of equal concentration because you have been given the concentration is one molar. So it's equal amount of the acids that have been dissolved in equal volumes. But that does not distinguish their strength. So they can't be of the same strength because they're of the same concentration. No, they can be of the same concentration, but their strengths remain. So hydrochloric acid dissociates fully, ethanoic acid doesn't. So hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, ethanoic acid is a weak acid. Please note that. So when we are using, we use electric conductivity to help us to distinguish. So when hydrochloric acid is placed into a beaker and the setup is done as shown. So we have a beaker containing hydrochloric acid and we have a beaker containing uh, uh, ethanoic acid. So strong acids like uh, hydrochloric acid and ethanoic acid give a brighter. So when you look at the, at the brightness of the bulb, you notice for the ones that are strong acids, they, they give a brighter uh, light and the ones that are of um, weaker acids they give a weaker light so what happens is that the strong acids dissociate fully so they are giving a lot of hydrogen ions which helps in the conductivity we say that conductivity is as a result of mobile ions so since there are so many hydrogen ions in solution the conductivity occurs faster Unlike for the weak acid that dissociates only partially, so it only gives fewer hydrogen ions. So the electric the uh, ions or the yeah the ions are all, few of them are able to move the electricity through the system. So that's why the bulb does not light that much. So next we use also pH. So if you are using pH, it is important to note this. So if we put different solutions of um, acids in different test tubes, and then we add a universal indicator in each test tube. So in this case, we test like hydrochloric acid, sulfuric, nitric, ethanoic, carbonic, and tartaric acid. And they are all in the same concentration. So you can see concentration does not affect the pH. Please note that. That is also an assessing, assessed question. So the indicator color and SPH number of each is noted and comparing to each other. 
So you notice sulfuric acid and fluoric acid and nitric acid will form a red color with the inverse of the indicator. That tells you they have a very uh, low pH, meaning they are very strong acids. And then ethanoic acid, carbonic, tartaric will be orange, yellow, and orange, which gives a very higher value of pH, which are weak acids. So you can see they are, P, they are in the same concentrations. So concentration does not affect the pH. What affects the pH is their ability to dissociate. If they dissociate fully, they give a lower pH, meaning they are stronger acids. If they dissociate partially, they give a um, higher pH, meaning they are weak. So solutions of strong acid contain higher number of hydrogen ions than those of weak acid. So strong acids have low pH, less than 3, and then weak acids have higher pH between 5 and 6. So you see this is also a concept of form 1 that has been brought in in this uh, setup. So I hope you have been able to differentiate strong acids and weak acids and you can be able to explain that comfortably. So that brings us to the end. In the next lesson we are going to be looking at now uh still on acids you're going to look at how now we can be able to when we dissolve two solvents together how can we be able to also see the strength of acids being shown in those um solutions so see you in the next lesson